How many teens use or sell drugs? There's a lot of reports and statistics out there, but most of them seem to agree that it's about 8 million kids over the age of 12 are using on any given day. What should you do if you know someone is using or selling drugs? The best thing to do is to talk with a trusted adult, a, a family member, a school counselor, a teacher, fill them in on the situation. How can they get out of selling drugs or using them? There's a lot of agencies that help people with that transition when they want to make a change in their life. My agency does that, for example. What does your agency do to help them? Well, it's different depending on the circumstances. Sometimes we work with people individually. Sometimes we involve the family, if that makes sense. Or we may get the uh, kid involved with a group program where everybody in the group is working on the same problems at the same time and they can support each other. What if they are afraid the dealer will find them and hurt them? Well, again, that those situations are going to vary, and a trusted adult is the person who can help sort that out. How do they give the drugs back to the person they got them from without getting hurt? Giving the drugs back to the dealer is really risky and potentially a dangerous thing to do. So that I wouldn't suggest that. I would, again, suggest talking with a trusted adult about the best way to dispose of them. Thank you. Okay, so for our video, we were talking about influence. Not letting people influencing you to do something that you don't want to do and you know it's not right. Like, if you don't want your friends, right, right friends, because you don't want them to make you do the wrong decision into your life. If you're doing something wrong and you know it, then you shouldn't do it. If someone says you should do it, that doesn't mean you really should. Like saying, smoking cigarettes or doing drugs, it's not good. If they tell you to and they're saying you're being afraid and they say they don't want to be your friend anymore and you're not like them because you won't do it, that doesn't matter. You know you're making it right and that's what you have to do. The influence. Nearly 23% of high school students use tobacco products and more than 90% of those teens smoke cigarettes, cigars, hookahs, or pipes according to the report from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So why should you not smoke? It costs lots of money. If you smoke two packs per day for 40 years, you will spend $116,800. Even though the warning on the side says Surgeon General's warning, quitting smoking now greatly reduces serious risks to your health. Some people still smoke. Smoking is addictive. It's very hard to quit once you start. How about the cost of medicine that help you stop coughing or breathe better? Wouldn't you rather want that money to buy things you really want more? Need another reason not to smoke or quit? How about having an ambulance ride to the emergency room because you can't breathe? They'll rush you into the x-ray to see what is wrong with you and you'll lie there, struggling to get your next breath. Then the doctor will come in and give you the bad news. You have lung cancer. You have emphysema. You have congestive heart failure. 
Still not enough to make you not want to smoke? How about the fact that smoking shortens your life by 14 years, which means you will probably miss seeing the future events of those you love most, like your children's or grandchildren's graduation, their wedding, the birth of your grandchildren, or even great-grandchildren. Now, why would you want to miss all of this? Just for one little puff of a cigarette. And here's one last reason not to smoke. Every day, almost 3,900 children under 18 years of age try their first cigarette and more than 950 of them will become new regular daily smokers. Half of them will die from their habit. Do you want to die? If not, smoke smart, don't start. And if you do smoke, quit. Now you have reasons to. I quit. What's gonna happen to us? They could have a knife, a gun, anything. And we get ready to go to school, only God knows happen, like what well, something will happen to us. Exactly. Because we might just be trying to get on the bus or go home and then something will happen to us. Exactly. What's the whole point of having RTS buses if it's gonna be used for violence? Do you want the y'all spend all your money on that nice building when you should have spent it on cameras? Cause you're talking about like they're only like in charge of the inside, what happens on the outside? Now, what if that's the security guards that's happening to them? What are they going to do? They're going to watch the cameras were out there. There are fights even on express buses. It takes hard work, commitment, a good report card, time to go to the gym. Well, I think one of the things that stops people from winning NFL is you got to be incredibly talented. But if you work backwards, a lot of times kids don't do the little things. You know, you got to go to school every day. That's an easy little thing that you can do as a student. You have to work hard every day. You can't take days off if you want to be great. You have to go and work hard every day. So I, I think a lot of times that, you know, 
if you reach for the stars, if you decide you want to be an NFL player, then that means you decide that you're going to work harder, be stronger, be faster, be healthier, stay out of trouble, and do all those things better than everybody else around you. And I think that's hard to do, and I think it starts with just doing the little things. Going to school on time is a little, little thing that a lot of guys who have great talent don't do. Uh, doing your homework every night is a little thing that will help you get good grades, but a lot of guys go home, watch TV, play video, and waste time when they could be focused on their dreams. So I would say doing the little things better than everybody else will increase your chances to reach your dream. And, and then like we talked about earlier, say you don't make it to the NFL and you do everything right, then you find what other things you're passionate about, what gets you excited, and you turn that into your career, whether it's involved in sports or something totally different. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes dedication. It takes uh, making sure you're a good citizen, making sure that you're doing all the things that players do in terms of training, eating, and practicing and learning the game. Well, what you have to do is take care of your body. You have to train really hard. You have to uh, work out for a lot of teams. And once again, you have to take care of all the little things that uh, sometimes people forget, getting up on time, uh, practicing, your heart is finishing, everything that you start. There was a lot of distractions if you chose to follow them. If you know why you're there and you know what you want to do and you hang with the right people, then those things, you don't even notice them. I, I hung with all the other athletes and I hung with good people and, and the teachers there knew what I was trying to do. So they looked out for me. When people know you're trying to do your best, Succeed. yes sir, then they, then they support you. You have to have life skills like listening, planning, analyzing, and manners. You got to have the skills to pay the bills.